With the beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion, we witnessed the rise of the tanks our obsolete argument. And indeed, thousands of tanks have been destroyed on the Ukrainian battlefield. To get to the bottom of the argument, we were lucky enough to get in touch with T-84 who upload main battle tank crew to see the most powerful and mysterious Ukrainian tank in action. We're driving on the top of T-84 Ukrainian upload tank. Unfortunately, with the seizure of the Crimea, a lot of details for this tank was not available for the mass production. But several of those tanks are currently in operation in Kharkiv region. Compared to other Soviet military equipment, getting into this one feels like you're in a sports car. It's much faster and there are four reverse gears. It can go 35 kilometers per hour backwards in the fourth gear, all while the turret faces forward. The Ukrainian-produced T-84U upload is an upgrade of Soviet T-series tanks. It has a 1,200 horsepower powertrain, a modern thermal scope that picks up targets at 3,200 meter distance, explosive reactive armor, electro-optical active protection systems, and the four gears reverse transmission that allows it to move backwards at a staggering 35 kilometers per hour. This thing is amazing for changing positions and moving back quickly. It doesn't go the usual 5 to 7 kilometers per hour. It goes 15 to 20 kilometers per hour, which is quite fast. This makes it extremely hard for the enemy to get you. We were once hit in the older version of the tank. We hit reversed, but almost stood still in one place, like a target in the middle of the field. If we had this new tank back then, we would have jumped out the field fast and would not have been hit. The transmission also allows you to spin in place. Russians can only do that with their new Ormata T-14 tanks. They don't mass produce them yet, but supposedly they can spin. Our tank was produced back in the 2000s and already had that system. Our tank's rangefinder and thermal imager gives us a considerable advantage on the battlefield. When we fight against Russian combat vehicles, we straight away know that their thermal imager and rangefinders are way worse. With ours, we can see 4,200 to 4,500 meters ahead, but they can only see up to 4,000 meters. Those 200 to 300 meters are our advantage because we can see them, but they don't even know we're there. Electro-optical system Stora 1, the curtain, allows to jam anti-tank laser and infrared systems that guide anti-tank rockets. It also automatically turns the turret in the direction of the emitter. The Russian T-90 tank is equipped with the same dynamic protection systems, but improved torque and better optics give a plot an upper hand in real battle situations. The tank also has a special targeting system. This means that when someone aims at our tank with a laser rangefinder, our system automatically shifts our tank's turret in that direction. It has different modes too. It can emit smoke that lets you see where they're firing at you from, and any driver will know where to turn the vehicle so it doesn't get hit. But even though our dynamic protection is good and our armor is strong and thick, precautions always come first. The maneuverability combined with the devastating firepower places a tank in a class of its own, making it an irreplaceable asset on the battlefield. However, the Ukrainian tanks are always a part of the bigger combined arms battles. You can hide and you can maneuver with a tank. In urban warfare, we can't really use manpads, but tanks can easily slip through the streets and destroy targets. Artillery can also destroy targets, but the shells come from above and they aren't as precise. But a tank can just come out from behind the building and destroy the target with one shot. It can also cover infantry, evacuate wounded people and bring in ammunition. Lightly armoured vehicles are vulnerable in these situations. A tank will never become obsolete, because a tank is a hunter. There's no need to compare its manoeuvrability with other military vehicles. A tank is a tank. The enemy knows the devastating capabilities of the tank, making it a top priority target. This is the third tank this crew has been operating since the beginning of the full-scale invasion. The tank was damaged. A part of the turret was pierced. There was a hole in it and the electrics failed. But the tank got out on its own from the battlefield. We left it there, ran back a bit. Vadim, the driver, left it in reverse gear with the engine running and the tank crossed the field on its own. 
We even came back on this tank and took out the seriously wounded. There's been a direct hit on our vehicle. The crew have been evacuated. The gunner, the driver, and me. The vehicle still works. It's slowly reversing, but the tank turret doesn't work. I think the tank is going to slowly come back to us and we'll try and get back into it. If it wasn't for my gunner, I would have stayed in the vehicle. In my opinion, the vehicle is really cool. If they made new ones like this, it would have been amazing. If we had a whole company of tanks like this, we could have done such unbelievable stuff with them. Sometimes when we get a call that the Russian tanks are coming, the guys say that they can't really do anything about tanks. Only tanks can go against tanks. Oleksii Savchenko, United 24 Media.